Hi everybody, it's Tyler here at Backstrills checking in. Coming in, by the way, the number one true skill team, 21-31 age, high mind, seven event wins this year so far and looking absolutely phenomenal. Aaron Division, as we film this, currently undefeated so far and getting all their autonomous win points. Congratulations on that so far too. What an incredibly just robust built machine. You know, a lot of these teams we've talked to, they just focus on simplicity and that's definitely high mind as well too. Great, simple robots that just absolutely kick a lot of butt here in the field is what we're all about. We'll be diving into just the different mechanisms that they go through on this, but just keep in mind that whole uh, build strategy. We talk about their autonomous strategy as well too and how all this came together. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Andrew, let's dive in more some of this uh, code of this robot as well too. You know, once again, your team has been doing so well getting the autonomous win point every single round for that. Talk to me about that and some of your autonomous strategies also. Yeah, so we utilize a lot of sensors on our robot to ensure that our robot performs as needed. Um, we run our odometry off of our drivetrain. Uh, that's just done from the encoders on the motors. A lot of teams run odom wheels. We found that uh, for the 15 seconds, we don't have to have that kind of uh, precision or reliability. Uh, we can get away with just the encoders. Uh, we have coded in a color sort. That's done off of an optical on the side of our intake. Uh, and then we have a limit switch that we haven't put the bar back in, but when it hits that little button, it'll throw the ring. Uh, it's fairly common. Um, last sensor thing that we have is we have a little distance sensor that goes across the intake. Um, that basically just means that if we drive into a goal, uh, it'll detect it and we can automatically clamp with our uh, clamp. So I want to go back a second. You mentioned for your autonomous modes that you're not running anything to compensate for drift or anything like that on there. So, I mean, that, that's kind of wild in my opinion that you're able to, I mean, your team's been so good at autonomous for that. At what point did you determine that you're like, hey, we don't need any sort of pods. We can just run with encoders. So that was something that we found last season. Uh, we had a goal bot at Worlds uh, that could go and de-score from the goal. And it was hard to fit in uh, odometry pods. And last year there was a lot of issues with odometry pods crossing the barrier, they had to lift them up or, uh, you know, they add a lot of friction sometimes. And they're kind of a lot of weight. Some, most teams say that like the weight isn't an issue. Uh, you know, it's something we can drop and that weight can be used elsewhere. Um, the way we get around that is basically just having traction wheels. Um, that has hurt us in some cases, I'll be honest. Uh, corners a lot harder with traction wheels because you can't just slide sideways. And because our robot is so wide, we have to be dead on. Um, however, using our modified version of Lemlib, uh, the odometry and the way we code into the corner has been fairly reliable. Walk me through what uh, one of your autonomous modes looked like in a match. For our quals matches, we like to stay as far away from the autonomous line as possible. Uh, and that's because uh, if you automatically, you automatically forfeit if you cross, right? And that, uh, that loss is a lot more detrimental than losing an autonomous because I can trust my driver to uh, make up those points. I can't make up the autonomous win point that we get from that match. And that's how we rank so high is we consistently get AWP. Um, so far, we're doing good. Three AWP, three wins. So we can get through that. I think that's a pretty darn good start so far. So congratulations yeah. on that. Let's pass over to Toby, talk about some of the mechanical aspects of your robot here with the uh, intake uh, and the clamp as well too. We're talking, rocking the uh, uh, split intake uh, for that. So just walk me through just how all this came together. Yeah, so we like to focus on actually having really good capabilities for Auton. And so what we did is we have an 11 watt that is on the second stage. And then we also have a 5.5 watt on the first stage. This allows us to actually pick up rings with the first stage separately from the second stage. So we don't have to, we can, get the right colored rings on the first stage and then also have whatever we need in the second stage. It also helped stop from jamming with multiple goals or just having like, or having a goal in your clamp and having your rings be weird. And so having these two systems separately still allowed you to have a ring in your arm as well as 
uh, ringing to be in your intake at any point. It was really nice. Then on our clamp, we have, it's omnidirectional. And so we can clamp from really any position, not just the corner or the sides, it can be anywhere. And then because we have the full 11 watt designated to our second stage, doesn't matter if it's a new, go new goal, old goal, we can score on it. I want to talk about on the size of your robot here. I'm able to get a very wide intake, and in some of the other robots we see, if they're going to have an intake that's not completely outside of the robot, it's a pretty narrow intake. What was your decision to build such a wide robot, and did that have anything to do with your intake process? Yeah, really, the reason we wanted a, such a wide robot was for the omnidirectional clamp, because we've seen a lot of teams here at Worlds and our other competitions that struggle clamping goals. Gotcha. And so with our goal clamp, having it also this high, we're able to actually pick up goals when it's really tilted or even on a ring. And so we're able to do that. And then because of that, we're able to have a much wider intake. And that really helps out in drive strategy and with Autons. No, it's fascinating to hear that, uh, that goal, mobile goal clamp first. Uh, it totally makes sense when you describe that on there too. So Ellie, uh, let's talk about uh, your Lady Brown mech on here, Hall, all that's coming together. Uh, and from a scoring standpoint on there, uh, are you finding uh, here at Vex Rules, is there any differences of here versus what maybe you saw at some of your signature events or at the Utah State Championship? Um, well, first with the Lady Brown, we just run a 5.5 watt, so we can have that more power on the intake. Um, and we found that that is plenty of power to get the ring on the stake if we have it lined up correctly. We have a 360 Lady Brown, which means we can score down on the Alliance stake. Uh, many teams hold their rings in place using compression. Uh, we actually use this little latch gate instead, so the ring passes through and then is able to sit in there. That allows us to push it out farther and actually gain um, farther reach. That helps us get the wall stake very cleanly and easily. So looking at this uh, Lady Brown mech that you have on here, were there any big changes coming in the worlds or was this something you had established earlier in the season already? This is something we had established earlier in the season already. Um, again, with the autonomous win point being so important and something we prior prioritize, uh, we definitely wanted our Lady Brown to be able to score on the Alliance stake. We had tried using the intake before, it's just less consistent tried um, putting a ring, mounting it like separately on our arm like some teams do, but really putting it in the Lady Brown and scoring with it makes it super consistent. And I think we've only missed it once or twice all season. Uh, and that's really helped us get the autonomous win point. Hi, Vine, thank you so much for taking the time. You got a phenomenal machine here. I uh, can't wait to watch it more on the field as well too. So good luck the rest of the way. And they're looking for big things here at Vex World. So we wish you the best. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.